this video, we're going to evaluate functions using technology, and you'll see that function notation can be really useful. Let's suppose that we are selling t-shirts at a craft fair. We're making them and selling them. We're going to assume that every t-shirt we make gets sold just to make it easier on us. So the cost to make a production run of t-shirts is $200 to set up the press and then $4 for every t-shirt we make. Let's write an equation for that. We're going to have the cost C, the input is going to be X, that's the number of t-shirts. Let's write that down because we've said that's always a good thing to do. So X is the number of t-shirts. C of X, well it's going to cost us $4 for every t-shirt, so that's 4X. And then it's always going to cost us that $200 to set up the production run. Okay, we've got a cost equation. Now the revenue. The revenue is the amount collected from the customer. We're going to charge $20 for these t-shirts. Every time we sell a t-shirt, we make 20 bucks. So the revenue here is 20x. Finally, the profit. To find the profit, we always do the revenue, which is what you bring in, minus the cost, which is what you lose. So the equation would be P of X equals R of X minus C of X. In this case, that's going to be 20X minus, and then we've got to subtract the entire cost. So we better put that in parentheses. We're subtracting 4X plus 200 and then closing the parentheses. So rewriting that, remember to distribute the negative, we'd have 20X minus 4X minus 200 or Let's see, 20x minus 4x would be 16x minus 200. Now we have an equation for p of x as well. Okay, so let's go over to Desmos and type in these three functions. Let's start with c of x equals 4x plus 200. So we'll go ahead and use c, capital C technically for cost, c parentheses x, now you'll notice that it, it puts the parentheses in in a light value. You can just tap the close parentheses or arrow out of it to get that parentheses. So C of X equals 4X plus 200 to set up the press. If we don't see anything yet, don't worry about that part. The next thing we're gonna do is put in R of X. So in the next expression, we'll type R capital R again of X, so parentheses, X, close the parentheses, equals, and we're selling those for 20 bucks, so 20X. And then we were starting to see our first result on the graph. It's a really steep increasing line going through zero, zero. And then finally, we're putting in the profit. So the profit is capital P of X, so parentheses, X, close parentheses, equals, and then our profit is going to be 16x minus 200. Okay, that one's not showing up on the graph yet. But I don't want you to worry about that because what we're going to do is use what we now have to evaluate the functions. So if you've got the function notation written in Desmos, you can literally just type in what you want to find. So when we want to find c of 100, just type in C. Now make sure that if you've used a capital letter in your equation that you use a capital letter here. So C of 100 and you'll immediately see in the lower right hand corner of that box equals 600. It's calculated how much the cost is when you make 100 t-shirts. We can just go to the next box and you can just tap below that or you can use the plus icon to add that box and we'll do R of 100, R parentheses 100, close the parentheses, and we'll see that the revenue made by selling 100 t-shirts is $2,000. Just from that, we should be able to predict that the profit would be $1,400, 2,000 minus 600. Let's check our formula and make sure we have our formula right. Let's put P of X, so P parentheses X, and in this case, we have, oh, P parentheses, excuse me, nothing happened because I didn't put in 100. All right, so P of 100, and I get out 1400. Bingo, that's exactly what I want. We can actually evaluate function notation as long as we've named every function something different. So that's why we often use functions like F, G, and H, or profit, revenue, cost, 
or in physics, you often will use something like S or H for position, V for velocity, and A for acceleration. We have sets of functions we always tend to use. Now, it might bother you that we haven't seen all the graphs yet, so let's go ahead and tackle that one. Uh, we can see that we've started to make a profit after 100 t-shirts, so let's maybe change our x-axis to show at least 100 t-shirts, and let's change our y-axis so that we're seeing these large numbers like 2,000 and 1,400. I'm going to go into the wrench menu, and in the x-axis, I'm going to go from negative 10 to, let's go to 150 just for fun. And on the y-axis, I'm just going to change the y value to be something like 3,000. And when I close that, you'll see we have the three lines for cost, revenue, and profit. Cost is the one that crosses the y-axis at 200 and increases from there. Revenue is the one that crosses the y-axis at 0, 0 and increases. It's a much steeper graph than the cost one. It's a straight line. And profit is actually crossing at negative 200 on the y-axis. That's because if you set up that press, you're paying $200. And so it's then increasing as a straight line as well. The last thing I want to show you is how you can use function notation with a table of values. So I'm going to click in that last space there and then click on the plus sign and add the item that is a table. Now I'm going to change some of the variables in the top of the table. Just click into those variables and then make your changes. I'm going to take off the subscript on the X. So I'm going to back it up so it's just X. And then in the first column, I'm going to backspace over the Y there and write C of X, again a capital C, and then parentheses X. And then in the next one, don't worry about the error sign right now, it's just because we don't have any table values in yet. If that bothers you, jump over to the first row and maybe type in 10 and you'll see that the error goes away. You can actually now click to the right of the C of X and we can put in R of X, so capital R parentheses X and you see it immediately fills in the value. And then we can go to the third column by tapping to the right of the R and we can put in capital P of X. Now it's getting a little hard to see this table, so I do want to make you aware that first you can hide the keyboard by pressing on the keyboard icon, and you can expand the window here. So if you hover so that you get the little arrows, um, I think you have a hover bar on your phone, you can drag this window to be a little bit bigger and that'll let you see the entire table. Now all I have to do to find more values is just type them into the table. So let's just type in um, 100 because we know that value and how it should turn out. And we can see that 10 t-shirts gives us a negative profit of 40 and 100 t-shirts gives us a positive profit of 1400. 15 t-shirts, oh that's a positive profit. What happens with 13? That's positive but not very big. What happens with 12 t-shirts? That gives us a negative $8. So somewhere between 12 t-shirts and 13 t-shirts. So at 13 t-shirts, we turn a profit. You'll also see that these values got added to our graph as we entered them in. If you don't want to see those points on your graph, just tap the circular icons next to C of X, R of X, and P of X. Of course, another sneaky way to see when the profit becomes positive is simply to examine the profit graph and get the value where it crosses the x-axis. If you just tap on that line where it crosses the x-axis, you'll see that Desmos very nicely gives you the x-intercept, which is 12.5. So in fact, that is where we go from negative profitability to positive profitability. Now, if we're going to answer the question, uh, I would say we make our first profit at 13 t-shirts, not 12 and a half t-shirts, because nobody's going to buy half a t-shirt. So just to recap, you can type expressions in using function notation. You can then evaluate those expressions with function notation. Make sure that if you use capital in the defining expression, that use capital in the evaluating expression. And finally, we can make tables of values that include function notation as well.